Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video. We're going to do the second Autumn 2020 Season Model Roundup for today's uh, first video. So we're going to get something like 14 long-range models together and uh, we're going to see what they're all showing for the Autumn 2020 for the second time. Uh, only the second time this season. And I'll get on with that for you very shortly. Just to say that it's going to be quite a long video as always with the long range stuff. So it will be uh, put on the autumn updates page with a written summary. So you'll be able to watch the video on demand, have a read of that uh, from this evening. Uh, it'll be on the autumn updates page. And uh, yeah, I'll get one up for you probably around six, seven o'clock this evening. Going to be a busy day, guys, well, it's today. So after this, we've got the uh, weekend forecast coming up. Your weekend forecast is always on a Saturday. And then also going to have a 10 to 14 day video update uh, as well. So, uh, so yeah, plenty coming up uh, on the uh, channel and on the website uh, today. Uh, now, we're short of a couple of models uh, for this. We have, we have still not got the Brazilian model. I think the Brazilian model could well be gone uh, permanent, you know, I think, I think could just be gone, and, and we're never going to have a Brazilian model again, it certainly, uh, hasn't, um, been updated for, for several months now, uh, so, so it's possible that the Brazilian model has gone, uh, we haven't got the Bayesian Climate Centre either, uh, this month, I'm not sure what's happened, uh, at the Bayesian Climate Centre, but the, uh, charts, uh, are inaccessible there, at this uh, moment so whether they come back or whether that's gone as well time will tell however thanks to our good friend Petipa H we have got three new models uh, to show you uh, temperature and precipitation we can't show you mean itself uh, mean sea level pressure uh, or um, 500 millibar heights with these new models but we can show you temperature and precipitation anomalies and I will uh, show you those later on in the video Okay, then, let's go. I'm going to start off with the uh, JMA. So this first model is only covering the period from August to October. So this doesn't quite cover the full autumn 2020 period just yet. This is the 500 mm of our height anomaly for uh, August to October with above average heights to our west, southwest and bringing in a westerly flow from off the Atlantic. Very westerly uh, for all three months, August, September and October with this latest update from the JMA. A lot of westerly winds on offer and are quite changeable too. Temperature anomalies for um, August to October are average to ever so slightly above average. Rainfall anomalies for August to October are looking like that. Uh, and again, they are near normal. They're near normal uh, with those rainfall anomalies for the uh, free monthly mean. This is CANSIP. So this is mean solar pressure from uh, CANSIPs via tropicaltidbits.com. This one is showing some higher pressure in the Northern Atlantic. Don't worry about the H's and the L's. Concentrate on the colours with this. So we've got some higher pressure up towards Greenland. And we've got lower pressure close to the UK and also across parts of Scandinavia. Looks like we could be lining up the jet stream a little bit northwest to southeast uh, there to be back during the autumn 2020. Temperature anomalies with CANSIPs are average to slightly above average. And precipitation anomalies are near normal too, not a particularly big deviation either way. Uh, so this is the International Research Institute for Climate and Society, uh, Earth Institute and Columbia U University. This is the temperature probability for the order of 2020 uh, for Europe. Um, we see that the probability favours... Um, no signal, uh, really, or, or sort of, uh, or sort of balanced uh, probabilities. So, so we're neither favouring uh, a particularly warm autumn, or neither favouring a particularly cool autumn uh, either. So, so average or no signal probably is favoured uh, with the probability maps for the autumn of 2020 for the temperatures uh, this this uh, month. And precipitation probability favours drier than average conditions across northern parts of Europe, drier for Scandinavia, drier for western parts uh, of Europe as well. 
It's not a strong signal. Uh, you know, probability isn't strong, strongly favouring uh, a drive and average conditions, but it is weakly favouring a drive and average autumn, really, but it much of Northern Europe, although Scotland probably favours being able to slightly wetter than average. Not a particularly strong probability uh, either way. Right, let's have a look at these new models then. So uh, we're looking at the NMME suite of uh, models. Uh, this suggested by our good friend Petipa. Uh, so this kind of like Copernicus. Now you know that Copernicus again together several sort of seasonal models and uh, and created like a suite of seasonal models. Um, uh, but that's a European based idea. This is a North American based on it. It's very similar. But this is North American based. Copernicus is uh, is looking at European uh, model output. So the first model we're looking at is the GM. So you know the Canadian model of the GM. This is like the long range version of it. Uh, so this is the temperature anomaly for the autumn of 2020 from the GM. From the GM. And it's going for average temperatures during this uh, autumn, or perhaps no signal, but certainly looks a little bit on the average side, slightly above average temperatures favoured for northern and eastern parts of Europe. The precipitation anomaly from the autumn 2020 from GEM is also uh, around average. A little bit wetter than average for Scandinavia. Notice it's drier than average up towards Greenland and Iceland. It might be indicative of a little bit of higher pressure up there, a little bit of northern blocking. Uh, the next one is NASA. So this is the NASA uh, Geo, uh, GOS 5V2 model. Uh, again, temperature anomaly for the auto 2020 looks like that. Slightly above average, slightly warmer than average autumn favoured. Northern Europe favoured to be quite significantly warmer than average with the, uh, with the long range model from NASA. Precipitation anomalies, uh, average to perhaps slightly above average, not a big signal, not a big deviation, uh, but maybe slightly above average per, uh, precipitation for close to the UK uh, uh, with the NASA model for the autumn 2020. And the last one that I'm going to include in this, uh, in this video is uh, NCAR. Don't know anything about this, it's a climate model, but this one is going for a colder than average autumn. Cool of an average order is being favoured here by the NCAR model, NCAR CCS M4, favouring a slightly cooler or colder than average autumn. Uh, and also across northern parts of Europe as well. Very warm autumn favoured for North America, by the way, with NCAR. Rainfall anomaly with NCAR looks like that. So a drier than average autumn suggested to our west and southwest. A little bit wetter than average up to our north and northeast. So uh, in tomorrow's live stream, going to be live stream from 6 o'clock, live stream from 6 o'clock. And I think we'll have a look at GM going further out to the winter. Uh, so so more with the GM long range model, the uh, long range GM winter 2021 forecast will be featured within our live stream tomorrow from 6 o'clock in the evening. I think it'll be... A fascinating watch, and uh, and so do check into the live stream if you want to know what uh, what the uh, GM is forecasting this month for the winter of 2021. And let me know what you think to include in this uh, suite of new models within uh, the uh, long range output. Right, this is an old favourite, of course. This is Patal Peng. So uh, this is, these are Patal Peng's analogues. Uh, this is 200 bit of our height anomaly for the order 2020. Remember, this is based on sea surface temperature anomalies. It's very simple. Patal is looking at sea surface temperature anomalies in any given month. In this case, uh, last month in June 2020, uh, looking back at Parshes, it had a similar sea surface temperature anomaly and then creating an analogues based forecast going forward. This is a 200 millibar height anomaly showing above average heights out to west and the northwest of Kent. So quite an anticyclonic autumn is being signalled here. Jet stream is possibly doing something a little bit like that. Might be a little bit of a dip in the jet taking place there. Uh, but overall, it is an anticyclonic autumn 
uh, being signaled from Patel Peng's analogs. Temperature anomalies of the autumn of 2020 coming out above average, going for a warm of an average autumn by around half to one degree. And a dry of an average autumn is being suggested as well, dry of an average precipitation anomalies for the autumn of 2020 from Patel Peng's analogs. CFS V2 uh, is looking like this is 700 bit of our height anomaly from CFS V2 going for a rather westerly autumn actually above average heights down towards Spain and um, through the Atlantic uh, through the central Atlantic below average heights low pressure up towards uh, Iceland jet stream and flow is coming in from the west uh, something a little bit like that so uh, so yes it's a uh, it's a rather westerly autumn being signaled there CFS V2 uh, temperature anomaly is very close to average, not a particularly uh, big deviation either way. No suggestion of a particularly warm autumn, uh, no suggestion of a particularly cold autumn. I was a little bit war warm than average northern Scandinavia, uh, down towards Spain, Portugal. Otherwise, it's very, very close to average or no signal. Maybe hints of being ever so slightly wetter than average in northern Europe. So Ireland, Scotland, some parts of Germany, the Low Countries, southern Norway. Those sort of areas indicated to be a little bit wetter than average. But again, it's not a particularly big deviation. I think overall, CFS V2 is probably indicating a bit of a westerly autumn. Uh, and probably near north for both rainfall and also for precipitation as well. Uh, ECM uh, WF uh, next means the other pressure anomaly looks like this. This is a little bit more interesting. Going for above average pressure, high pressure in the North Atlantic and Mid-Atlantic Ridge going up towards Greenland. Fleur Majette is going northwest southeast on a northwest southeast trajectory. It actually suggests slightly above average temperatures uh, for this autumn. But with a mid-Atlantic ridge going up towards Greenland, I would have thought something a little bit cooler than that could be expected. Um, but anyway, it's going for slightly above average temperatures or no signal, really. And a little bit on the wetter than average side as well to the north of the country anyway. A little bit wetter than average up there. Otherwise, again, not a particularly strong signal. Metro France means the pressure anomalies look like this, going for above average heights to our west southwest, or, or high pressure to west southwest, as it means the pressure. Low pressure is up towards Scandinavia. Uh, maybe doing something a little bit like that, the flow of jet stream. Again, a little bit westy, a little bit northwesterly, but close to the ridge of high pressure. That should bring the driest weather into the south. Uh, could be a little bit on the cool side with a northwest southeast alignment to the jet stream for this autumn. Temperature anomalies have no signal, but to our north, actually, it's a cooler than average autumn that's been indicated there with below average temperatures for Iceland and going northwards into the northern Atlantic. Precipitation anomalies with the ECFWF, uh, with um, Metro France, I should say. Again, no particularly strong signal either way. That's a slightly cooler autumn being suggested, by, I think, with the northwest southeast alignment of the jet stream. Uh, DWD, the German model, has high pressure sitting over to the south country. Low pressure is up to the north. Winds are kind of westerly uh, with that one uh, as well. The temperature anomaly with the DWD uh, model is close to average. Again, it's not a particularly strong signal either way. And the rainfall anomaly looks like that. It's wetter than average to the north of the country. Again, no signal elsewhere. And then finally, the CMCC Mediterranean model looks like that. Finally, for the uh, Copernicus suite of models, I should say. Again, higher pressure from the Atlantic into many western parts of Europe. Jet stream is probably doing something like that. Low pressure is up to our north. Temperature anomalies are cooler than average away to the north and to the west. So below average temperatures in the North Atlantic. No signal of CMCC for the UK, for Ireland and for much of Western Europe. Um, rainfall anomaly. Again, no signal. It's driving average to our west southwest. That's where the high pressure is, of course, there. Otherwise, no particular signal uh, for this autumn from a rainfall perspective. Jamstech uh, temperature anomaly for the autumn 2020 looking like this. A warmer than average autumn is being indicated there from Jamstech, not just for the UK and Ireland, but through most parts of uh, Northern Europe. In fact, most parts of the world are signaled to be warmer than average, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere. 
And the precipitation normally looks a little bit on the dry of an average side as well. So quite a warm, dry, anti-cyclonic autumn. It's probably been single there by Jamstech. I'd normally show you Beijing Clothes Centre at this point. Haven't got that. So lastly, we'll show you the uh, UK Met Glow C5. And uh, again, this is the mean silver pressure anomaly from UK Met Office season model for the autumn of 2020. Again, similar to a lot of the uh, Copernicus suite of models, higher pressure to our south and southwest lower pressure up to the north winds are in from off the atlantic or rather atlantic uh westerly autumn but with higher pressure close to our south southwest there could be a lot of dry weather involved in that uh temperature anomalies average to slightly above average during this autumn and the rainfall anomaly if anything hints at being a little bit on the wetter side especially so for england <coughs> Excuse me, especially so for England and Wales, but also uh, for much of Northern Europe as well. Okay, so pick the bones out of that. What do we make of all of that lot? Well, it's a mixed bag uh, again, not a particularly clear signal. I think overall we probably are favouring a little bit more of an anticyclonic type autumn here, uh, really. There's very little sign of a particularly wet or stormy autumn. I don't think there's... There's many of these models going for like a particularly wet or stormy uh, autumn. Generally, we just seem to be quite close to higher pressure sort of to our south southwest, lower pressure up to the north. Everything all rather westly. It doesn't like rather westly autumn, but with high pressure close to the west of the southwest, uh, not particularly uh, not particularly wet. Uh, uh, you know, not a strong signal for wet autumn. Uh, so that's it. There are one or two of the models that are a little bit colder as well. That's something that came through last month. To some degree, that's still there as well. Uh, this month, maybe a slightly cooler autumn than we've had uh, for a little while, but rather westerly uh, or northwesterly Atlantic driven. Okay, that's it uh, for this update. We'll do it all over again uh, next month. And, of course, next month we are getting ever closer to the Gavs Weather Vids uh, autumn 2020 forecast. In fact, that forecast is going to be released uh, at the end of August. And uh, so that will be on Sunday. I'm not sure. Let me uh, refresh my memory. Let's pause the video, actually. Yeah, so uh, we just checked it. We uh, are releasing the Gaz Weather's autumn forecast on Sunday, the 30th of uh, August. So the final season model roundup, the final final season model roundup for autumn 2020, we release the day before Saturday, the 29th of uh, August. And then we'll be releasing the Gaz Weather's autumn forecast on um, Sunday, the 30th. And then, of course, when all of the autumn stuff is done, uh, we are on into winter updates. Can you believe it? Getting ever closer to that. But we've still got the autumn updates to do. And, uh, yeah, we're uh, we're going to do our last um, uh, season model round for the autumn of 2020 on Saturday the 29th of uh, August. Right, so uh, that's it for this video. We, we're back later on with your week's 10-day video update. We all of usual features before that, though. We've got weekend forecast. Uh, this video will be placed on the autumn updates page and there'll be a written summary that goes with it as well. And I'll get that up for you probably around 6, 7 o'clock this evening. Uh, tomorrow we're going to have some more autumn analogs, a bit of a QBO special. Gaz where we suddenly round up and we'll be live streaming from 6 o'clock. Remember, in that live stream, we're going to show you the uh, GM winter 2020-21 forecast. So that can be quite an interesting watch, I would have thought. 6 o'clock tomorrow. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.